Hello everyone, so today we are going to see how to protect a fast API route with the GZOP web token from, um, from Keycloak. So I prepared some code, uh, it's a basic example just to illustrate a bit how this works. As you can see, it's a pretty short code. Um, I'm going to show you in, an, in a moment how to start Keycloak, but it's just to illustrate that we have here uh, two routes, uh, one route that is not protected, so you can call it and uh, you'll get the answer without the JSON web token, and, um, and another protected route that um, where you actually need to pass it a, a token, otherwise uh, you're going to have an error. So to start uh, Keycloak, it's, uh, I'll show you actually on the website, um, you can go on keycloak.org. In this example, I'm going to use Docker. And uh, basically what I do is that I just, uh, yeah, I'll just take this command. It's a simple Docker command where you need to specify uh, the admin username, the admin password, um, and the, the Keycloak instance. It explains to you also how to create a realm, how to create users, how to log in to the account console, um, how to secure your, your application, but we're going to see all of that uh, together. So the, the way to start Keycloak is, uh, like I should just issue this command. Of course, you need to have Docker installed. It takes a, a moment to start, and uh, then you can go on localhost port 8080, and it's going to ask you for your admin, uh, for the admin username and the admin password, and in this case, uh, it's a very simple password just to illustrate how this works. Of course, use a secure password. All right, so that's um, what you're going to see when you get on Keycloak. Uh, and as you can see, you have a yellow banner that uh, explains that you're logged in as a temporary admin user uh, to harden security, create a permanent admin account, and delete the temporary one. So to create a realm, uh, you go here, you create your realm. Uh, in this case, I'm going to call it uh, first API realm. And then you go on um, clients and you create a client. You're going to need a client ID and a client password. So let's call it uh, fast API client. You can give it a nice name. Um, this is what is going to be displayed in the in the console uh, in the Keycloak console. Uh, fast API client and give it a description if you want. Okay, click on next. Um, here, you're going to need to have this box uh, checked. So this switch uh, defines the type of OIDC client. When it's on, the type is confidential access. When it's off, the type is public access. So this is a very important thing to understand, um, but it's a more advanced concept. And uh, at the moment, we are just going to put it on. Uh, so it's going to be a confidential access type uh, client. And this is what will allow you to get a client ID and a client secret. It's usually used by a backend application. OK, and you will also need to check these two boxes. The, so you need to make sure that the standard flow is selected, that the direct access grants is selected, and the service account rules are selected. For the root URLs, uh, I think it's going to be http 2.localhost 
and then simply uh, port 8000. So port 8000 is the port on which the first API API is going to run. Um, the valid redirection is going to be uh, this URL, but you need to add a forward slash and a star. Um, it's a wildcard that says that you can redirect to any URL um, that starts with this. For example, if you had a real domain name, uh, you'd probably use your actual domain name uh, here. And, uh, and also, you would probably specify um, a more specific redirection URI. Right. So here, same thing. We're going to just put this also to localhost port 8000. And as you can see, um, that's it. We've created our client. You need to go to credentials to get the, the client secret. So as you can see, it's going to be um, a very strong key. And you need to paste it here. So in the code, uh, of course, uh, here I've hard coded this in the um, in the file itself, but you'd probably use a, a dot env, uh, something like that here. So as you can see, we have a couple of dependencies. So of course, we have fastapi. We have requests uh, uvcorn, python, uh, jose, and python.env. Now, and here now we should be able to import it. Um, it's going to be from uh, .env import, what is it, load.env, yep. And then we probably do something like um, call this function here. We probably need also to import uh, the OS module. OK, uh, let's see if it works. So to start first API, uh, we are going to use uvcorn. OK. Um, and I also uh, saved a couple of curl commands just to illustrate that this root, for example, is not a, uh, is not a protected root. So you can curl this endpoint, and you should get the answer uh, in this case, this is simple, simply hello. And um, uh, this curl command, so to call the, the protected endpoint, uh, we, need to get a, we need to get a token. So as you can see here in the code, like I said earlier, um, you need to pass it a token, otherwise, because it's going to try to to decode uh, this token, and this is actually, this is really the step where it verifies that your token is valid, and it's only if your token is valid that you're going to be uh, that you're going to get this message. And here, as you can see, the message is going to be uh, you have access to this root, and then um, it's going to just print the decoded token to show you a little bit what's inside of the of the token. Um, so this command is just simply simply going to get a token from uh, from Keycloak, and it's not valid because and that's because I did not update this uh, variable. As you can see, I tried earlier, but I need to update this secret. Otherwise, it's not going to work. That's probably going to be much better now. Yes. OK, so as you can see, we get a token from uh, Keycloak when we use the, the correct uh, client secret. And just to illustrate a bit what is inside of this token, there is a very useful website. Uh, it's called uh, gwt.io, and you can simply uh, paste your token. It's going to decode this token for you. 
Uh, and you can see a little bit the content of, uh, of a key cloak uh, token. You have the expiration uh, date, for example, and other um, other informations. Now, what I'm going to do is that uh, I'm going to issue this curl command. It's just going to save this token uh, into an environment variable, which is uh, called token. Uh, and as you can see here, I'm just uh, using the, the JQ um, command line tool that will allow me to parse just the content of the token. Because, you know, um, we get, you see, we get a, a JSON uh, back and I need to extract just just the content of that JSON, we just need to extract the the access token. Okay, so I've downloaded the token. You can see that if I do echo token, it's just gonna print the the token itself and not the rest of the JSON. So now this curl command is gonna call the the projected endpoint. Um, and it's going to put in the authorization header uh, the bearer token, which is the token that we just got here. And as you can see, um, we actually get um, a response. You have access to this root, and it's just uh, yeah printing the decoded token in a very similar. Um, this is a pretty much the content that we have from. Um, GWT.io, and uh, you can see that if you simply try to curl the the projected endpoint, um, well, without uh, giving it a, a bearer token, uh, you are going to get a, a not authenticated error. So yeah, that's it. Um, It was a small introduction on how to protect a fast API API with uh, JSON Web Token um, and uh, Keycloak.